Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à Paris Retail Week. Je m'appelle Cédric et je suis joint par ma collègue Natacha. Nous avons des sections de euh, éducation cette semaine. Ça va être dans l'espace de les paiements, mais ça va être sur les sujets de les données et aussi de la fidélité de la clientèle. À vous Natacha. Freedom Pay est une plateforme de commerce à l'échelle mondiale que le commerçant de toute taille et de tout lecteur utilise pour accepter diverses méthodes de paiement, en personne et en ligne, en toute sécurité. Au-delà de notre expertise, nous, euh, dans les paiements, notre plateforme s'attaque également dans de nombreux défis auxquels les détaillants se confrontent quotidiennement, tels que la compréhension des habitudes de leurs clients grâce à l'exploitation des données. Voilà. Uh, to recap for all of the uh, English listeners, thank you so much for joining us uh, for Paris Retail Week. My name is Cedric. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Natasha. And what we have for you all this week is a series of different uh, demos and educations and presentations. And it's going to be within the space of payments, but with a focus on uh, consumer data, how to harness that data, how to understand what happens in a retailer's environment. And then from there also, how do you start to use technology to bridge that gap to ultimately create long-term loyalty from these consumers? So, we're running a live uh, QR code poll for the, for the entirety of this week. And the reason for that is because we want to understand at Paris Retail Week, what are people thinking about when it comes to data? How do you use data in your organization? There's certainly a lot of use cases. Um, you can see how the, the poll is doing currently. Right now, what we're seeing is a lot of interest from our retailers this year around financial reconciliation, um, optimizing their operations and just streamlining things internally through understanding what's going on with inventory. And then currently what's leading uh, the pack, if you will, is understanding, again, that consumer behavior. What do those consumers in those retail uh, locations, both physically and digitally, what do they like? What don't they like? How are they shopping? Are they part of a loyalty program? All of that very consumer-centric uh, information. Now, when we think about this consumer data, it generally is, I would say, the hardest one, arguably, to actually achieve for a retailer. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. But what you're looking at right now, this is kind of the utopia, right? This is the consumer journey. And what retailers are seeking is understanding of this consumer from the beginning all the way to the end to converting into a sale. It's really the white whale of data, namely just because of every single day with increasing privacy protocols, things like GDPR, CCPA, we've seen it in the news currently, or recently if you will, with Facebook and Apple going head to head, and now Facebook is having challenges understanding their consumers. So this isn't just for the SMB and mid-market merchant, the large global brands feel it too and are always trying to understand uh, what's going on with the consumer, but in order to do that, they need to be able to understand all these different data elements, and that is a major struggle currently. Merci Cédric. Comme Cédric vient de le dire, le rêve serait de savoir tout ce qui se passe pour le consommateur au cours de ce parcours, n'est-ce pas Si vous disposez de ce niveau de granularité pour chaque consommateur, vous pourrez savoir ce qu'il a fallu pour convertir un consommateur d'un bout à l'autre de la chaîne, comprendre ce qui l'a fait cliquer, ce qu'il aime. Si vous connaissez parfaitement votre consommateur, vous avez toutes les chances de le fidéliser ou de l'inciter encore plus à dépenser, à revenir plus souvent, à adhérer à votre programme de fidélité, etc. Mais comme je l'ai dit, cette utopie n'est pas facile à réaliser. Aujourd'hui, face à la multiplication des lois sur la protection de la vie privée des consommateurs tels que le RGPD, les détaillants doivent s'enforcer d'acquérir des données tout en respectant les lois. Et ça, ce n'est pas facile. Pas du tout. So that's from one side of the equation. There's also a gap in technology. And think about retailers today that are going global, that are going across, uh, across countries and having to deal with data across those countries and aggregating it together. Now think about, it's great to be a consumer because we all love to go into a retailer's physical location and maybe we go to the countertop to shop. Maybe we go to the self-use uh, self kiosk. Maybe we're ordering online and picking up in store. So while it's a great time to be a consumer, that retailer is forced to be able to understand how they connect all of that on the back end. 
And so what we see is this growing technology gap because of all these different elements. And again, this is just to accentuate the fact that this is one other reason why it's so hard for those retailers then in the end to be able to connect all of that data about those consumers across those countries, across all those different channels. It's a large task for those uh, retailers. Comme Cédric vient de le dire, un autre défi n'est pas lié à la réglementation. C'est la technologie. La technologie s'est considérablement fragmentée. Pensez à votre propre organisation. Combien d'éléments sur l'écran utilisez-vous actuellement La raison justifiante de l'adoption de ces éléments est tout à fait valable. Généralement, il s'agit d'améliorer l'expérience du client. So again, this was to set up the conversation about data, just understanding that there is a large gap when it comes to effectively collecting and understanding data. What we'd now like to transition to is how Freedom Pay works with our retailers to solve for all of these different elements to truly understand those consumers. And so where we begin with this is in the retail store, right? This probably looks very familiar to a lot of you. If you look at the left side of this, that represents all of your different point of sale types, channels, and systems that we spoke about as a consumer. In the bottom left, I'm going to the kiosk, maybe for self-service checkout, or maybe I'm going in the top left uh, to the countertop. But these all represent friction potential filled uh, data points, because again, that retailer, that merchant, has to be able to connect all of them back together again. And so what's nice when working with a partner like Freedom Pay is you'll see we sit in the middle of all that. And that's because Freedom Pay's commerce platform uh, really shines when it comes to integrations. Those integrations to those front end point of sale systems so that a retailer can choose whichever point of sale system that, that works for them. If they find some new emerging technology, Freedom Pay is happy to continue that path to get that connectivity. And it also goes across all of those countries. So in a word, integrations are a really key piece in what you see, which is connecting up that entire retailer's estate, both from an e-commerce to an in-store physical. On the back end, you also see different connection points because as consumers, we like to pay our way. We want that freedom of choice, right? And so that maybe one day I'd like to pay with a certain card tech. Maybe another day I'd like to use an alternative payment method because it suits me better, such as a PayPal or a Klarna. Who knows what's coming tomorrow? That's going to be another alternative payment method. But the, the end theme here is that connectivity is what's necessary to bridge that gap when we saw on that last slide all that fragmented technology. This is how Freedom Pay goes to market with SMB all the way through enterprise global brands to be able to connect their entire estate together to solve for that technology gap. Natasha? Ce que vous voyez est une représentation typique d'un environnement de paiement pour un commerçant de détail. Depuis les systèmes de points de vente à gauche de l'écran jusqu'au processeur de paiement de détail à la droite. Dans ces exemples, le flou standard d'une transaction avance de gauche à droite. C'est ici qu'il apparaît le défi de la fragmentation des technologies évoquées dans, la, dans le diapositif précédent. Mais ce que vous remarquez, c'est qu'au milieu de l'environnement de ces détaillants se trouve Freedom Pay. En tant que solution fondamentale, nous prenons ces transactions du point de vente sur la gauche et nous les acheminons vers la partie appropriée sur la droite. Toutes ces explications nous amènent à parler des données. Tous ces points de vente mènent directement à Freedom Pay car nous assurons des intégrations de tous ces points de vente. So that's how Freedom Pay goes to market to connect all of the different data points which in our eyes represents those payment channels for that retail. Once you have all of that data now coming into one place, the next task for that retailer is to now start to identify those consumers within that mountain of data. They need to understand, is this your first time? Do you come to my store 12 times a week? Are you a long time customer of mine? And so in order to do that, we start to change the conversation and talk about tokens. And what we see here is essentially a payment token. Payment uh, tokens are great when it comes to a sense of payment security because what happens is instead of our, as a consumer, our clear credit card number passing through that retailer's ecosystem, what happens is that payment token instead passes through at that point of payment. That's great for payment security. 
The problem when it comes to understanding that consumer is that payment tokens expire. So the next time that that consumer comes and inserts their card, a new payment token uh, would be created. Again, fantastic for payment security, but less ideal when it comes to really truly understanding who your consumers are, what they like, their habits, and their trends. Puisque nous pouvons consolider les données d'un détaillant en un seul endroit, en toute efficacité, il s'avère que l'effort de la conciliation n'est pas le seul défi, c'est juste le premier. Une fois que vous avez réussi à regrouper et centraliser vos données de paiement, le deuxième défi consiste à identifier votre consommateur parmi toutes ces données. De plus, comment identifier le même consommateur via plusieurs transactions et sur tous les canaux et types de paiement. Il s'agit d'un point essentiel car un commerçant de détail cherche à comprendre le comportement de ses consommateurs afin d'apporter le changement requis et mieux les servir à l'avenir. Now, that was a payment token, correct? And so what we're transitioning to is a freedom pay created asset that we call the analytic token. The simple difference between a payment token which expires and the analytic token is that the analytic token does not. So as a consumer, you can shop and you can use that same payment method. Think of it as a fingerprint for that payment method. As a consumer, if they come back to that same retailer, insert their card again at a later date, that same Freedom Pay analytic token will be generated. And so that's how we go to market with merchants so that they can understand the history of the consumer. Because now you're seeing the entire history of that payment method. Si vous payez une fois avec votre carte, puis vous revenez dans le même magasin à une date ultérieure, le détaillant verra deux jetons de paiement dans ces données. Cela ne vous aidera pas, car euh, cela ne vous aidera pas, car il y a plusieurs types de jetons. Le jeton analytique de Freedom Pay permet au détaillant d'avoir une visibilité sur tout son portefeuille. Que la transaction soit faite en personne dans le magasin ou en ligne ou à travers un QR code que le détaillant a produit. So let's just step back for a second to talk about where we've come from. Through the power of all of our integrations, Freedom Pay has the ability to connect that retailer's entire estate of payments. That means we're not missing out on any data point. That's great, that's coming into one place. The next step is, how do I start to identify that consumer's history so that I know, have they been here before? Are they my most loyal consumer because they are a regular? All these different questions and answers. What's their average lifetime value? That's when we talk about the analytic token. The final piece in this puzzle, if you will, is that as consumers, we all have multiple cards. I used that example a few slides ago. Some days I'd like to pay with a credit card. Another time I'd like to use PayPal or Klarna or another payment method. So the last piece of the puzzle in our eyes is to understand that consumer and be able to connect them across all of their different payment methods as well. And the way uh, that we have solved for this is through the use of the Freedom Pay digital wallet. Put simply, a retailer can use Freedom Pay within their smartphone application as the digital wallet. And then as consumers, we've already done this before with our Apple wallets, with our Google wallets. It's as simple as adding your different payment methods into that retailer's uh, digital wallet. It can be standard card types, it can be a voucher, it can be a gift card, it can be just a payment entity. The magic that happens on the back end when a consumer does that is that Freedom Pay will link and bind together all of those different payment types so that now it doesn't matter how that consumer pays, it always shows up as that same consumer across their different payment methods. Je vais maintenant poser la question que certains d'entre vous se sont probablement déjà posée, à savoir, j'utilise plusieurs types de cartes de paiement. Comment pouvez-vous me connecter à tous ces types de cartes La réponse est la suivante. Freedom Pay peut agir comme portefeuille numérique dans les applications smartphone du commerçant afin d'affiner l'exécution d'un paiement. Dans le cas, nous pouvons relier toutes ces méthodes de paiement à un seul consommateur. Ainsi, si vous êtes le consommateur et vous ajoutez à ce portefeuille numérique votre carte de crédit, une carte cadeau, voire un bon d'achat, Freedom Pay peut faire le lien entre tous ces éléments. Le résultat est le suivant. Quel que soit le mode de paiement du consommateur, Freedom Pay les relie tous. So in short, 
we can accept the data from all different elements from a retailer's environment, both at, in, in physical stores, at separate disparate systems like a kiosk, online, wherever that uh, merchant essentially can accept those payments. We've now also talked about how we can determine the history of that one consumer and that individual payment method. With the digital wallet, we can now connect. So what does that get you at the end of this? Now, it doesn't matter where that consumer uh, shops with you, on what channel, Freedom Pay will see that and we can surface that to the retailer on the back end. It doesn't matter how long ago it was that you shopped with that retailer, we can use that analytic token to, again, understand consumer history. You truly get the full 360 degree view of that consumer in the final piece, as we said, with that digital wallet. And so the long and the short of it is that we can tell that entire consumer's value to that retailer from the moment that they first inserted one payment type with that retailer up to present day. And we can turn that over to the retailer and we can do this across countries in real time so that you can finally solve for that merchant connectivity technology gap that we saw earlier. Quel objectif avons-nous atteint grâce à toutes ces données Nous connectons tous les systèmes du point de vente du commerçant pour qu'il sache que toutes ces données ont été consolidées en un seul endroit. Ensuite, à partir de toutes ces données, nous avons pu suivre un consommateur via l'historique de son mode de paiement grâce aux jetons analytiques. Enfin, nous avons connecté ces mêmes consommateurs à toutes les méthodes de paiement qu'ils ont utilisées. Le détaillant a toute l'histoire de ce consommateur. Le détaillant sait à présent où le consommateur a fait ses achats, comment il a procédé et comment il aime payer à travers des transactions effectuées avec ce commerçant. So now that we've talked about how Freedom Pay goes to market with our partners, with our merchants, with retailers specifically even, that's how to get the data. Then the action is on the retailer because everybody wants data. We saw that in our initial poll, there's a variety of different types, but then you get data. The next challenge is you need to activate on that data. And so Freedom Pay offers two various services when it comes to uh, offering that data to the merchants. On the left, you'll see our data warehouse feed, which is a flat file of every single transaction with all of that good data in it, inclusive of that analytic token. And it's really for those merchants who either have a BI platform or really just want access to that raw data in an aggregated fashion. Think about instead of having to have the manual lift, the onus, the responsibility, most likely the investment to have internal teams manually pull all of this data across a retailer's countries on a daily basis, that's all minimized because Freedom Pay handles the entirety. We aggregate all of the data together and then we can automatically deliver that to the retailer so that they can quite simply pick up one flat file and then they're off. On the flip side is the Freedom Pay BI platform. We take all of the raw data, both in the history of that retailer, but also every new day that we receive more data via transactions from that uh, retailer, and we place it into a private instance for that retailer of business intelligence. It's self-service, it's really geared towards understanding that consumer trend, that giving that retailer that insight very quickly so that they can then take action, so that they can activate on it, so they can start to uh, create these surgical marketing campaigns with which to really start to drive all that, that consumer behavior because they've done all of that hard work and connecting all of their data together and now you have a vehicle to actually be able to make sense and drive those insights from your data. Avec Freedom Pay, les détaillants peuvent procéder de deux manières. Nous proposons un service que nous appelons Data Warehouse ou entrepôt de données, qui consiste à rassembler l'ensemble de vos données à un seul lieu et qui vous est ensuite livré de manière automatisée quotidiennement. Les commerçants utilisent pour des tâches telles que la réconciliation ou comme une autre source de données à placer en parallèle à celle que le commerçant possède déjà, euh, peut-être déjà. L'autre option est notre propre produit informatique décisionnel ou Business Intelligence. Il s'agit d'une plateforme de BI en libre service où Freedom Pay place toutes les données de transactions d'un commerçant dans son propre environnement de BI privé. So, this concludes our session on data. What we've been speaking about so far is what we're looking at is the commerce platform. 
you'll see at the bottom, this is where we start to talk about data. Because to us, the transaction and the acceptance of a secure payment is really just the beginning of the conversation. As a commerce platform, that's, that's the doorway to our platform. But then beyond that, that's when we start to engage with retailers, with partners, to help them solve for how to aggregate data, how to make sense of their data, how to glean insights from that data, to then do what? The answer to the what is going to be our next session, which is the top left of our platform, where, again, we're going to start talking about how do you then use those insights to activate on those consumers, to drive their behavior through smart marketing and through incentives and rewards and loyalty and all of that demand generation activity. So we hope you'll join us uh, later today for that session. Thank you so much. Comme vous pouvez le voir dans cette représentation de notre plateforme de commerce, nous pensons que les données sont la première étape dans la gestion du comportement du consommateur pour un détaillant. Notre plateforme de commerce est équipée pour faire bien plus que simplement offrir des données. Comme vous pouvez le voir, la prochaine session portera sur la manière dont vous pourrez tirer parti de vos données et les utiliser efficacement dans votre stratégie de génération de la demande. Merci. Merci beaucoup à tous.